Like some all first verse shit. The fat boy. Damn, I'm wild. Shout out to Damn, I'm wild. Fat boy, what's going on? Shout out to Damn, I'm wild. Damn, I'm wild. Damn, I'm wild, man. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to Fat Boy. Damn, I'm wild. Damn, I'm wild. Check out Damn, I'm wild. Man, Fat Boy. Cook up. My fat boy say, I respect the culture. I advise you niggas to do the same. Hey, franchise. I'm on to you, bro. Yeah, I'm on to you. You think you slick. <laughs> See, versus Danny, you was like, it's 1 1. It's 1 1. And Smack co signed that shit. Like, oh, it's, it's 1 1. And Danny was like, all right, it's 1-1, one, one, and then he choked. And then you battle Av. Av is rapping in the first round and shit, and you like, oh, that's not enough. That's not enough, but you're getting close. I'm listening. I'm paying attention to what you're doing, my nigga. Right? So then the round ends for Av. He got the first. And then at the start of the second round, your second round, I hear you do this shit. A little more than that. Bro. Here we go. Give me a little more than that. Give me a little more than that. That's how you That's how you more than that. That's how you more than that. That's how you more than that. You were close though. Yeah. You were close. You were close. You were close. You close. You were close. You were close. You You were close. 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 You were you're not about to talk your way into these W's, bro. You're going to have to rap. Fuck all that bullshit, nigga. You're going to get hit with them bars. You're going to have to stand there like a man and you even win or lose. You ain't talking your way into no wins. Fuck out of here with that shit. Hit the plug for a hundred, man, I might have. For a month straight, pulling all nighters. For a dollar jugs, man, these niggas ain't going to like us. Cops start hating on the block, trying to dice us. Teflon dumb, man, I move like I'm Gotti. Play with me, I drop a Rolex on a homie. President, you rolling on my youngin' for the body. A nigga whole weight, fat shove, feeling cocky. I step up out the farm with the drip. I do what I want, cause I'm a grown ass crip. My little great niggas pull up on you quick. You shouldn't have ran your mouth, now you all up in the mix. Ears everywhere, better watch who you diss. The shooters that I send at you ain't gon' miss. So you better get your girl that last kiss. I'm from the bricks, we was born with the You can shit. call me Fat Boy Man, AKA, I'm not in the NBA, but I am the two guy, AKA. I might not be the man, but I'm right next to God. Shout out to you, you, and you. Don't adjust your values, man, because the accent is just fucked up. I'm from Baltimore. You should already know. Let's just start the show. What up, y'all? It's your man, Fat Boy, checking in. Uh, I'm, I'm at work, as usual. You know what I'm saying? Doing my thing, so I did it a little different today. Um, I just wanted to touch on this battle real quick, because I felt like it was important to... to to make sure to mention this one along the way, especially with Av being in the mix for champion of the year at this point in the year, I definitely had to touch this battle. Um, a few things I wanted to say without, you know, recapping a bunch of buzz and shit, I wanted to hit a few points for both battle rappers. But before I do that, I feel like I don't want to be redundant, but I definitely got to mention something that I mentioned in my last blog because Av is involved in it. Think back to when Av was... Um, let's say he, you know, came off the Nun Nun battle and Mike P and then Rum Nitty and then he, what is a surprise battle on what, Gnome, right? Maybe Gnome 6 or some shit like that. He battled Chess. I think that was a surprise battle. Yo, Av was white fucking hot at that point. White hot. Av was feared by a lot of motherfuckers coming into that shit and if i'm not mistaken at the time i think was this was around the time when uh o-red was coming back and he wanted to smoke and then suge was the one who really started with the whole this nigga be stealing he really got the ball rolling on this stealing shit and um ad was just on, he was on fire and i think around that o-red shaka suge period is when Av, the heat kind of came off him a little bit, right? 
But in 2019, Av has really just took off. Like, this nigga's on fire. He made sure to sit Arsenal's ass all the way the fuck down. And even in this battle, he still did his fucking thing. And he didn't have to. He could have kept it light. He had a good battle with Blue Easy. And I'm not going to run down the whole resume. I'm just saying, at this point in Av's career right now, from when he was white hot in the beginning, and then he kind of, I won't say cooled off, but... His name wasn't buzzing as much for a period, but he was still a dope battle rapper. He's back to being white hot right now. And you can't play with Av. And I'm saying all that to say this. Averb has to take this battle with, with Av now. And I know I just spoke on this about telling niggas when they have to battle and who they have to battle. Because we fans, we want what we want. But they only going to move as fast as they want to move. Here's the thing, though. In order for this battle to make sense, Av is, and, and obviously this is just my opinion, Av is not going to reach a point where he's in god tier status and it still makes sense to battle Verb. Like, too much time is going to have passed in order to make it to that point. And I feel like Av just being one of the best out right now is good enough to match him up with Averb and this battle makes sense. Verb, you are a legend in this. You are a icon in battle rap. You can't find many names that's bigger than a verb. You just can't. So it's like with coming off of battles with Mook and Lux, I know Av wants that battle right now. So while Verb's name is hot and Av's name is white hot right now, this is the period that makes the most sense to make this battle happen sometime this year. Now, maybe it's already in the works because they're doing a whole lot of back and forth. And if history shows you anything, you've been a fan of this culture and you on Twitter, you already know. When niggas start going back and forth on Twitter, they probably already booked. But they've been doing this for a little minute now, so I, I can't really tell just yet. But it only makes sense to book this battle right now. I would love to see the battle only because I know Av is going to give Verb a fight. And I know that Verb knows if he come to dance with Av... You cannot play with him. He one of them lyricists that you cannot bullshit with. And Verb going to pin together some really good shit. I think it makes a dope matchup and it puts another stripe on Av's resume. And right now, I'm really in the mind frame of whether it be Chess, whether it be Av, whether it be Twerk. I'm really in the mindset of us needing to build these new up-and-comers so that we have another tier of top elite MCs to replace the ones that we kind of losing. We're not seeing these vets the way we used to see them, and that's more and more obvious all the time. You get one or two really big ones on the card, and it's like John John has kind of filled in as one of the staples. O-Red, even though it's been a little minute since 2017, he filled in as one of the staples, one of the big names from back in the day, and et cetera, right? So it's like we need these names to grow so that we can get these big matchups down the road so they continue to continue to be big matchups down the road. So, moving from that, let's get into the actual battle. Av versus Franchise. This was a pretty good battle. I did enjoy the battle, start to finish. I, I thought both MCs did come for the shits. They was with it. Let's put your dancing shoes on. Let's get right to the fucking shit. And right out of the gate, Franchise was with it. And the thing with Franchise is this. You walked into this battle... And I said this in my prediction blog. You was walking into this battle against somebody who just does what you do, but they have mastered their craft. And I just don't see you doing this better than what Av does it. Av's setups are better. A lot of Av's setups, even in this battle, you can see his setups were better than some of the shit that a franchise was putting together. Um... And Av is just a master at disguising where the punch is going to land. Every once in a while, you can see where it's going. But he puts his shit together and he pins it so well. You know, rest in peace to Tech. Hey, the cleanest puncher in the game. That has not changed at all. Av is still that nigga when it comes to setting shit up. It's always clean. It's not a reach. You... It's understandable. It's all that. It's, it's always pretty perfect. Now, whether it's super fire or it's just cool, 
or the range in between, that's a whole different thing. Franchise hasn't mastered that yet. What Franchise has working for him is the fact that uh, he can create those dope punches and he has the energy, he has the aggression, he has everything you want. He brings you the gun bars, the street shit, but it's some things he's got to know, bro. We don't say bando no more. That's not a... We don't we don't throw that around no more. I get that there's a there's a barrier between the U.S. and where he's from up in Toronto or whatever. There's a barrier, so it, it's a bit of a gap. But that's always obvious when I'm watching franchises. It's like okay, we don't say bando. Every battle, you remind us that you was running from the cops. You pull out all the gunball badges. You make sure to hit all the different guns, and that's cool. And I'm not knocking that, but it's like. You got to give us more. You got to become more than that at some point. So it's like, for example, um, I think that because that the language is a little, is worded a little different, I think it helps to disguise franchises' punches during the battle because it's very easy to, to see some punches coming from other MCs. And franchise, even though he's beginning in all this, he's not one of the ones where you can always just see where it's coming. But I think that is because things is worded different where he's from. He's able to disguise it a lot better and it don't just become apparent to you right off the rip where he's going with it. So that helps. But boy, okay, your current event shit, bro. And I said this behind the scenes to some of my peers. Shout out to all of them. Um, the spin the top shit. That's a recent thing. People kicking the top off bottles. That bar was terrible. Jamming the gun down your throat. It's the cucumber challenge or whatever the fuck. That was terrible. That just, it was a bad bar. Damn near pause worthy. <laughs> you can't get that off. Your current event shit has to be fire. You got to sell it very well. Because niggas kill DNA for that. We don't want to hear a whole bunch of you trying to make a whole round out of current events and shit. And then it's like you got you got Teletubby bars. We the, we not doing Teletubby bars. Like you got to set your punches up better because they need a lot of work. You really just relying on I got this gun and I hold it like this and I do this and then and then you word it together with some other shit and make a punch out of it. I'm not saying that you can't stick to the street shit. In my opinion, I'm just saying that you got to set it up better because when you face niggas like Av. Who really have mastered that part of that. It's going to show the separation dramatically. And I think that that showed in this battle to a great deal. Uh, Av on the other hand. And this battle. He was flawless man. I, I won't say he was a, a A or A plus. I really felt like Av was just on B plus. But he definitely showed the separation. He definitely did not slack on this battle. And it, people felt like this was a trap battle for Av. And it could have been. Had he came with just some mediocre shit and just been whatever this is franchise, it, it might have got bad. It might have been a different outcome. You know, I got people telling me that they feel like franchise edged that second round. And, I mean, I'm not going to argue nobody that feel like that. Even if that's the case, they still was telling me that Av won this battle 2-1. I got it 3-0 for Av all three rounds. I, and the first round, I watched Av clean him up. In the second round, I've cleaned them up. In the third round, it was no different. It was just levels. It was separation, and I've cleaned them up. Now, the stock. Av stock don't necessarily go up, but it's another notch on his belt towards champion of the year. And that's dope for Av. I feel like late in this year, as long as he don't have any hiccups, He's going to be in the running at the end of the year. It's almost no way. At this point, I don't think you can move Av out of the top five for sure. And he might be positioning himself comfortably in the third spot. At least. Sitting right next to Geechee and Danny Myers, in my opinion. Ironically, all three of them are punchers. Um, at the same time, for franchise, his stop. Um... I don't think it takes a dip at all. You stood in there and gave a good fight with Av, one of the best out. You got a good win over Danny Myers, and I guess he felt like uh, he can get the same uh, approach. I mean, again, and this is popping in my head. I'm sorry for backtracking, but like again in this battle, he kept bringing up the ad libs. Oh, if you and your man, if the man's behind you, ad lib. You said that shit like five or six different times. It's like, bro, 
we get it. You probably thought Tay Rock was going to be there. You probably thought they was going to be gassing. Nobody was doing shit like that on Av's side, bro. So it's like, it's making you look weird. And that's what's making it stand out that you keep bringing up the ad libs and shit. It's like, you got to be more strategic. And it's like, I understand he's still growing. I'm not trying to kill him. I'm just critiquing the battle. Franchise doesn't have a stock drop after this battle. I feel like if anything, he stays kind of where he is. But it does add a level of uh, experience to his resume, so to speak. So it's like, you know how you developing players on your, your 2K or your MLB or whatever, your Madden, whatever you play. And it's like, damn, I thought I was going to really, you know, grow in this area here when in, in actuality. And you just gain some some points in this area here. That's pretty much what happened with him. So you didn't level up to the, like from an 86 to an 87 he really stayed at an 85, so to speak. But, you know, at the end of the day, it works well for franchise to have that out of the way because you don't want to have to battle Av on a main stage somewhere and get smoked because Av is also getting better. And, you know, that could have been detrimental to your career to get Av on a main stage and you take a 30 or you die or some shit like that. It would have been worse. This happened in a room of not many people, apparently, is from what we're hearing from uh, people who were at the event. You died in the room. You, you lost. I won't say he died. He lost in a room that didn't have that many people. And, you know, the crowd didn't, you know, really gas Av to the max or no shit like that to make it look worse. So it was a good, good battle for both. Uh, again, Verb, Av, we, we need to get that book. Franchise, salute to you, bro. You did a good job. You just didn't win this one. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to more franchise battles. No lacking, my nigga. I love that shit. No lacking. It's your man, Fat Boy, though. Signing the fuck off. The same way I always do. I respect the culture. And I advise you niggas to do the same. Hey, yo, Posey. Take us home, my nigga. Please don't unplug the game.